U.S. intelligence chiefs are testifying before the Senate today in an annual hearing on worldwide threats. The director of national intelligence says that Russia underestimated Ukraine's resistance and made serious errors in planning the invasion. Let's bring in ABC News contributor and former CIA station chief Daryl Blocker for more on that. Daryl, thanks for being here. Where do you think Russia went wrong here and how long can Ukraine hold out regardless? Well, I believe they went wrong by having an intelligence officer with zero military experience behind the effort, and that would be Vladimir Putin. Not only that, his cabinet is made up of other intelligence officers. That would be akin to me prosecuting a U.S. military, you know, um, incursion abroad while I have a military background. I'm an intelligence officer, and this is not something that uh, uh, Putin should have been planning. And they're paying for it. Now, what do you make of this recent now controversy over potentially sending Polish jets to Ukraine through a NATO air base? At first, it seemed like this plan might happen, but that whole detail of the U.S. NATO air base uh, seems to have thrown a wrench in it. Where are we now with that? It, it sounded odd from the very beginning. Why would they send planes west just to come back east? And the only thing that I could assess is that it was some ploy to try to get uh, between the President Zelensky and Duda of, of Poland and, and uh, the Ukraine to hedge the United States or to hedge the NATO alliance more towards getting them involved. So logistically, it didn't make sense. Uh, politically, it didn't make sense. That's a bilateral relationship between, um, between two countries. And really bringing in the United States was just kind of a... Uh, a ham-handed way of trying to force us into, into a position that we didn't want to take. So uh, how significant has NATO's support been to Ukraine so far? I think it's been astounding. And quite frankly, Putin doesn't play by the rules, and we should be considering as the NATO alliance bringing in immediately the Ukraine into the fold or into the European Union. And I know that those are red lines for Putin, but he's already crossed all of them. Well, and I wanted to ask you about because about that, because a lot of the plans so far that have been nixed are nixed because it's said that Russia could view that as a, a provocation or, or an escalation in the conflict. But it doesn't seem like there's a lot that clarifies what Vladimir Putin will or won't accept in terms of help. So how do you draw the line on what is acceptable aid to give to Ukraine and what isn't? That's a, that's a, honestly, that's a very difficult uh, discussion because, again, you can have unilateral action, meaning a nation is going to take its own steps, which is exactly what the Russian Federation did. You can have bilateral the discussions between the Ukraine and Russia on, on, on this matter uh, hosted by Turkey or multilateral NATO, United Nations and such. Because the United States and NATO units have been uh, in the East European um, theater for many, many years, they know, meaning Russia knows, that we provide weapons, we provide training, we provide a number of things. This is just an extension of that. This is just fast, uh, uh, fast tracking, getting javelins and surface-to-air missiles and other equipment and uh, material to the fighters on the ground without having our own people being U.S. forces or NATO forces involved. An intelligence official say now that the Kremlin is, is spreading rumors, essentially, that Ukraine is pursuing weapons of mass destruction that, of course, are false. So they say that this is straight out of Russia's playbook. So, one, how do you determine what is false flags and false information coming out of Russia when what may be accurate? And, and what is Russia's ultimate goal with the propaganda that's been going on throughout this whole war? I still believe that his propaganda is mostly directed against uh, the people within Russia, because as soon as the people start to rise up against him, I think it's going to fast track again his removal from office. And I, I, think, it's, I think it's inevitable that he will not remain as the president of Russia after all of this is resolved. The world just won't sit by and, 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 uh, and live with that. But in terms of what Putin needs to be doing next or what we need to be doing next is continuing to talk um, at every level, 
uh, talking beats beats dying. So as long as people are continuing to talk, he won't. My fear is that he is going to launch a major, major uh, invasion of Odessa, of Kiev, and then just allow the world to deal with the fact that uh, we waited a little bit too long to uh, come to their aid. And Daryl, adding to that, the White House is warning that Russia could use chemical or biological weapons in Ukraine, even possibly as a false flag operation. So what could that look like and how much does that add to this calculus we're always trying to do? Well, we know that, we, that they use them in, in Syria. So uh, very recently in the last four to five years. Mm -hmm. um, chemical bio biological weapons are very, very tough. The agency has a history of tracking it, it's it's never, you know, it's never 100%, but the introduction of those type of weapons into the, uh, into the equation would significantly ramp up the amount of people who are gonna be injured on the ground. And I believe what Putin as an intelligence officer is doing is saying, it's really the Ukrainians doing it. Everything that the playbook, um, everything that we predicted he's doing, He's playing by 20th century rules in a 21st century uh, scenario. All right, Daryl Blocker. Always great to have your analysis, Daryl. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.